old formula in this game is beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Try to play 500 against the good teams, and the Cardinals have not been able to do that against the sub-500 teams this year. However, Big Albert had a big day yesterday, a couple of home runs, and uh, Matt Holliday continued his hitting streak, got his 100th RBI of the season. That's our Land Rover high performance yesterday in Pittsburgh. Albert with home runs number 40 and 41, so he leads the National League in homers. He's second in RBIs, probably won't win the MVP, mainly because his team not going to make the playoffs. But, uh, again, I think the Cardinals very disappointed right now with the season they've had. The Cubs as well, but playing better than St. Louis currently. You know, when you fall out of a pennant race, Lynn, uh, you guys are still physically involved in the game. They go through their work. They go out there and try to win ball games. But that emotional involvement that you have when you're in a pennant race sometimes leaks away, and it looks like that's what's happened to the Cardinals. Both teams without their starting catchers the rest of the way. Giovanni Soto had shoulder surgery earlier this week, and also Yadier Molina shut down with right knee soreness. Jeff Samarj will get the start on Sunday, the Cubs' final home game of the season, and he had a chance to chat with our Chris Bowden. Well, and thanks a lot. And, Jeff, uh, what can you tell us about uh, how pleased you probably have been with their, your last couple of starts, your last couple of opportunities out there? What's What's been the difference for you these last uh, couple turns? Yeah, you know, I just feel like uh, I've carried a good rhythm over from, from AAA here into September, and uh, I've been throwing a lot of strikes and uh, making some pretty key pitches when I needed to. On top of that, uh, you know, when you're getting five, six rounds a game, it helps out a lot and really allows you to attack the zone. What were some of the things you tried to focus on all season long over at AAA Iowa? You know, I just think becoming a more complete pitcher just as a whole. I think, uh, you know, when you're down there, there's things you need to work on. You need to work on getting ready for the game. You need to work on your pitches individually. Uh, and then you need to work on pitching in situations. But, uh, you know, my mechanics really got uh, straightened out down there. Uh, to a consistency where I can repeat my delivery, you know, every pitch and, you know, allows you to take your mind off that and work on other things. You're always kind of eyeing, obviously you probably wanted to be called up earlier this season, get an opportunity then, but uh, now these last couple of uh, turns in the rotation, this is obvious an eye toward next year and there's a, a lot of competition going for spots next year too. Uh, absolutely, you know, and competition is always good for a team. You know, it's a good thing the more guys you got competing for some jobs, it means you got some guys that can that can do it. So. Uh, you know, everyone's been pitching real great here at the end of the season. I know Tom's going to go today. And, uh, yeah, you know, so everyone's in, in pretty good spirits, especially how we've been playing lately. And, and uh, it really gives us a positive and uh, puts a smile on our face into going into next year. I mean, personally, how, how would you characterize what, what 2010 has been for you? Obviously, you're up early in the year. Probably would have been, obviously, like to have been up uh, all season long. But uh, where has the growth come for Jeff Samarja moving forward? Well, you know, I think it's just a big picture year. I think you got to look at it as, uh, you know, what's happened the last two years. I think last year, you know, we went up and down a lot and rode the elevator, you know, between the pen and starting. And, you know, it's hard to, hard to really get any better and hard to really really improve and get comfortable in that situation. So this year was, you know, we kind of looked at it as a whole and, you know, let me go in AAA and get my work in and, and really throw 100, 120 solid innings. And then that way from here on out, you know, we're comfortable when we're here at Wrigley and uh, pitching the big leagues. Yeah, one more start on, on uh, Sunday and then probably one more after that. How much do you view that as, as a springboard then heading into the offseason into 2011? Oh, it's huge. You know, I think uh, every inning you get here is big, and especially in our situation now where a lot of young guys are playing and they're taking a look at everybody. You know, you need to take advantage of every opportunity you can. And so whether it's one, two, two more starts, just go out and, and you know, pound the zone and, and uh, try and make some quick innings and, Show what you can do for next year. Well, I know. I know you've been asked uh, about about Rhino after playing under him all season long. But yeah. when you came back here and and took a look at uh, uh, the things uh, Mike Quaddy has done since since he took over, uh, what's been the main differences? How, how come this team is eighteen and nine under under Mike Quaddy? Well, you know, that's it's a very tough question for the, for these guys playing. You know, myself, because you know you talk about two great guys. You know, you talk about two guys that do it the right way and manage. Uh, you know, with all their heart and really want to win games. You know, you talk about you know Rhino and Q and. And uh, but quite has been done an awesome job here since I've been here, and and uh, just the way the guys are reacting with him and playing for him has, has been has been wonderful. And uh, you know everyone's having fun regardless of our record or regardless how the season's gone. You know we've been taking this last month, uh, you know like we're in a pennant race. We've been playing hard, and that's really all you can ask for from a manager. All right, good luck on Sunday. Good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate it. Man. All right, that's Justin Margel and said back up to you. Chris, thank you very much. Jeff will face Jake Westbrook in the series finale on Sunday. We'll talk about today's starting pitchers at wind blowing straight out once again today. Cardinals and Cubs coming up.
book on sale as the uh, Cubs wives, along with Ryan Dempster, who's signing copies of that great book in the concourse area today. Make sure you pick one up at a Chicagoland bookstore. Now the starting pitchers today. Good to see left-hander Tom Gorzolani back in action. His first outing in over three weeks. Tom uh, suffered a broken finger against the Pirates on September 1st. Adam Wainwright has never lost here at Wrigley Field. He is looking for his career best 20th win of the season. So Gorzolani for the Cubs. Wainwright for the Cardinals. We'll have Cubs baseball from beautiful Wrigley Field coming up next. From Wrigley Field, we're set for Chicago Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. Extremely windy conditions once again today as the Cardinals are here for the final time in 2010. In fact, this is the Cubs' last home series of the season. It's game one of a three-game weekend set, the Cardinals and the Cubs here on Comcast Sportsnet. Hi again, everyone. Alongside Bob Brenly, I'm Len Casper. The Cubs have been out of it for a long time, but playing pretty well, even though they did lose two of three to San Francisco. Cardinals are barely hanging on in the National League Central. Bob, their elimination number down to three. You know, you can forget the standings when you're playing the Cardinals. Cubs-Cardinals, one of the greatest rivalries in all of sports, so it really doesn't make any difference what the standings are. But as you said, the Cardinals hanging on by the skin of their teeth in the Central. Reds are in San Diego. That's a big series for both teams uh, coming up this weekend. And one of the reasons the Cardinals are seven and a half out is they have lost five straight to the Cubs, including a sweep last week in St. Louis. Boy, and that was a lot of fun. Anytime you go down to St. Louis and sweep the Cardinals, you're going to have a good time, especially when the offense swings the bats the way they did and the pitching staff pitches the way they did. Tom Gorzolani back in the rotation. So right now the Cubs have a six-man rotation. 
Last night's tough start from Ryan Dempster notwithstanding. Uh, Tom has a lot to live up to today. Well, he does, and, and I don't think anybody, even Tom himself, quite knows what to expect from this outing today. You know he's going to go out there and give it everything he has for as long as he can, but because of the long layoff, it was September 1st, the last time he pitched. Uh, not quite sure how many innings or how many pitches that Mike Quaddy will be able to get out of his left-hander. Yeah, they're hoping they can get about 85 out of Gorzolani here today. Adam Wainwright trying to become the third 20-game winner in baseball. He still could win a Cy Young. You never know. Yeah, and the Cubs have banged him around pretty good this year. He's definitely in the Cy Young mix, especially if he picks up his 20th victory here today. Well, Cardinals and Cubs, uh, you'd like to see certainly the Cubs in this thing. And as you said, it really doesn't matter what the standings look like. This is always a, a fun series. And, Bob, we're not sure about Tony La Russa next year with St. Louis. You're hearing some rumblings. Could this be the final series he manages against the Cubs with St. Louis? Well, it very possibly could be. Tony La Russa has to be one of the big free agent managers out there. So uh, we'll see what happens. All right, let's send it down to the field. Wayne Mesmer with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. We watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still. to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Member owned means our reason for being is your well-being. Experience, wellness, everywhere. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com.
You're watching the Cubs and Cardinals from Wrigley Field on Comcast Sportsnet, presented by Allstate. Interesting quote from Mike Quaddy. Uh, one of the pieces of advice given to him by the outgoing manager, Lou Pinella, was that daily grind with the media. The last thing Lou told me when he left, and he was, he was so good to me for the four years here, was what was about you guys and he said you just just be prepared to deal with you guys and it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a negative thing it was just like this is this is the huge part of this job and obviously when you do this at the minor league level okay you, if i see one of these okay so it is that's the newness of it the managing of the game and the managing of people is something you've done you're still getting better at still working on it but but this onslaught every day is something that, that you got you need to get through. And um, I, I'm, I like it, so I'm okay with it. I think Mike's done a nice job, but I think you could attest to the fact that it, it takes up a lot of your day. It really does, and, and you have to weigh your words very carefully, make sure that the players and people within the organization are up to speed as to what decisions you're making before you announce anything like that to the media. It's, a, it's very much a balancing act, but I think Mike has done a really good job since taking over for Lou Pinnell. There's Tony La Russa. Let's get the Cardinals Southwest starting lineup. Again, their elimination number is three. That's Cardinal losses or and or Reds wins. They rank sixth in the league in runs. Former Cub Aaron Miles leads it off. He has the best numbers of all the Cardinals against Gorzolani. Colby Rasmus playing center, batting second. Albert Pujols. With six home runs this season against the Cubs. Matt Holliday hitting 315. You have Alan Craig and Wright. This is the third different lineup written out by uh, Mr. LaRussa today. Feliz at third. Matt Pagnazzi behind the plate. Brendan Ryan hitting eighth. And the pitcher is Adam Wainwright. Take a look at the Cubs defense this afternoon. Sam Fold will get a start in left field. Marlon Bird once again in center. Brad Snyder getting a start over in right field. It'll be Ramirez, Castro, DeWitt, and Navy across the infield. Boy, Hill doing the catching once again today for left-hander Tom Gorzolani. Boy, it has to feel very good for Tom Gorzolani to be back on a mound once again. He was really just starting to hit his rhythm as a starting pitcher in the rotation when he was injured by that line drive off the bat of Jose Tabata from the Pittsburgh Pirates. But uh, has been declared fit, healthy, and ready to go, and hopefully he'll be able to get deep enough into this ball game for Mike Quaddy to use his bullpen in an orderly fashion. Rob Drake will call the balls and strikes. The crew chief is Joe West. Dan Bellino at second. Angel Hernandez at third. Aaron Miles, eight for 18 against Tom Gorzolani. He's in the leadoff spot playing second base. Cubs have won five straight against St. Louis as we are underway. Swinging strike. On Aaron Miles. A sixth consecutive win. If they could get it today against St. Louis would mark the first time since 1983. During which the Cubs beat St. Louis six times in one season. In a row. Off the end of the bat, little dribbler to Blake DeWitt. Nice quick exchange to get it out of his glove to the hand and to Xavier Nady. That's one of those plays, Len, you have to make quickly, but in your mind you have to slow the game down a little bit. If you try to rush that play at all, you're probably not going to field it cleanly, maybe not make the exchange cleanly, and maybe not make a good throw. But Blake DeWitt was able to slow it down and... Toss on in time to get Miles at first. Wind blowing straight out to center once again at 16 miles an hour as Colby Rasmus takes ball one on a breaker low. But we should point out this is the third time in four days on this homestand the wind has blown very hard out. And we've already seen two shutouts in those situations. All three games against San Francisco were shutouts. The Giants pitching staff had two and the Cubs had one. The only thing we haven't seen this week in terms of weather is snow. <laughs> We've had stifling heat, all kinds of wind. We had a long rain delay. 
before the start of the game Tuesday night. Today, 61 degrees. Swing and a miss, strike three. Gorzolani has been better against righties than lefties this season, but he strikes out Rasmus. A good sequence there against the left handed hitting Rasmus from our Coors Light Robo Cam after setting him up with some inside fastballs early in the count, finishes him off with the slider off of the outside corner. Very tentative swing that time from Rasmus. Good sequence for Gorzolani. Brings up Albert Pujols, leads the league with 41 home runs. Not going to win the major league crown, trailing Jose Batista by nine. 407 career home runs. So he's tied with Andrew Jones and Duke Snyder for 45th on the all time home run list, seven behind Daryl Evans. For 44th. Did Daryl Evans ever hit a home run to left field? Not to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> he was a dead pole home run hitter from the left side. And short porch at Tiger Stadium served him well when he was with Detroit. Very inviting target. Daryl Evans was a dead pull hitter to begin with, but you give him a short porch like that oh. to aim at, it's going to be even a more extreme pull hitter. Who else thought it was ball four, then paused to see if Rob Drake was going to call it a strike, and it, in fact, was ball four. It's his 93rd walk of the year. Against only 73 strikeouts, approaching 600 at bats on the season. That is a rare combination. A power hitter. That doesn't chase bad pitches, takes his walks, 35 intentional walks to go along with the unintentional walks on the season. Now, their hottest hitter by far, Matt Holliday, who has a 15 game hitting streak. Boy Hill is going to head out. Maybe tell Tom Gorzolani you were aggressive against Miles and Rasmus. Let's do the same against these guys in the middle. We'll get them. I mentioned earlier, Holiday picked up his 100th RBI of the season against the Pirates yesterday. No surprise when the guy hitting in front of you has a 406 on base average. You're going to get a lot of opportunities to hit with runners in scoring position unless Big Albert cleans them with a home run. Swing by Holiday and he fouled it off. He leads the league with 45 doubles. Including today, just 10 games to go. These three and then a seven game road trip to San Diego and Houston. Padres knocked out of first as uh, they lost late last night in Los Angeles, and the Giants a 13 to nothing winner here. So the Padres a half game back. And they'll host Cincinnati tonight. The Giants are at Colorado. Popped up. Nady will give it a look, but no play. Now don't assume that ball is going to end up in the stands. You mentioned that wind howling out to center toward right center a little bit today. It's going to push some balls back into play that normally would go up into the stands. Nady stayed with that one to the point of crawling down the tarp to make sure that ball didn't come back on the field. Bounding ball ticketed to right. So a 16 game streak for Holiday. Well, 
Anytime you can get Matt Holliday to hit ground balls to the right side of the infield, you'll take that. Uh, every pitcher's job is to try to get hitters out, but sometimes uh, the best part of the battle is just keeping guys in the ballpark, keeping them away from the gaps in the outfield, and an opposite field ground ball single through the right side is not the worst thing that could have happened right there for Matt Holliday. The latest insertion into the Cardinal lineup, Alan Craig in right for Nick Stavanoa. Tweaked his right knee yesterday. And after batting practice, Cardinals made a late change. The other change was a manager's decision. Daniel Doskowsko, who had four hits yesterday at Pittsburgh, was taken out of the lineup for Pedro Feliz, who originally was going to be in the lineup. Then he was taken out, then put back in. I guess Pedro was told by his manager yesterday that he was going to start today, so that was part of it. And uh, Tony LaRusso also really wants to stress defense with Adam Wainwright on the mound looking for his 20th win. So Escalso will probably be in there the next two days. Swing and a miss, one and two on Craig. And anytime you play a Tony La Russa managed team, you know there's going to be a little gamesmanship. Uh, this is not the first time the Cardinals have changed their lineup multiple times after the initial one was issued. So I think everybody at this point just waits till game time and see who lines up. Rocketed behind the Cubs dugout. Still one and two. I mean, today I filled in who holes in the three spot, Holiday in the four spot, Wainwright in the nine spot, and I wasn't even sure about that one because Tony likes to hit his pitcher eight sometimes, but uh, I filled in those three and waited for the final lineup. I learned my lesson a long time ago. Tony's in his 15th year with the Cardinals. Franchise record, 1,310 wins. Outside, two and two. The hand injury suffered by Gore Zolani on September 1st was a small, incomplete hairline fracture beneath the fingernail of his left pinky finger. Back out here on the mound 23 days later. Three and two with two outs. The runners will go with the pitch. Signs that time with Albert Pujols out there at second base, staring right in at Coy Hill, giving the sign. So rather than deliver a pitch that could possibly be relayed to the hitter from the runner at second base, Coy Hill decided to call timeout and verbally talk it over with Tom Gorzolani. Make sure they knew exactly what they want to do. I would imagine Coy won't even give a sign now. He just went out and verbally told his pitcher what he wants him to throw, and will probably just sit behind home plate and say, "Okay, throw it in here." That's exactly the case. A high fly ball deep to left field. Sam Fold is going to watch it just get over the basket and into the front row of the bleachers for a three run homer. Only the third career blast for Craig. All this happening with two outs. The walk to Pujols, a single by Holiday, and the 3 2 pitch for a home run from Craig. Fastball down and in. Craig hit it high in the air to left field. The wind has turned a little bit, kind of blowing from left to right. Seemed to maybe be knocking that one down a little bit, but Sam Fold just ran out of room. That ball hit in the front row of the bleachers in left field. The Cubs gave up four homers last night to the Giants. One and one on the former giant, Pedro Feliz. In 
the air out toward Brad Snyder in right. Backing up as he makes a catch. To end the Cardinal first, they get three on the homer by Craig, and the Cubs are coming up against Adam Wainwright. Southwest starting lineup written out by manager Mike Quaddy. Corner guys in the outfield, you see the uh, fold and Brad Snyder. Part of the reason is uh, Alfonso Soriano hitting 179 against Adam Wainwright and Kosuke Fukudome 154. We're going with those matchups today. As Mr. Wainwright, who lost to the Cubs two starts ago. Deals a strike to Sam Fold. Fold and Snyder getting just their second starts of the year. One and one. Once again, solid numbers for Adam Wayne, right? One of the best right handers in the game. Up to the left. That's Matt Holliday. We know Holiday's in left field. Let's check out the rest of the Cardinals defense. Holiday, by the way, with eight assists from left field, leading National League left fielders in that category. Colby Rasmussen center. Alan Craig over in right field. It'll be Pedro Feliz, Brendan Ryan, Aaron Miles, and Big Albert Pujols across the infield. Matt Pagnazzi doing the catching today, as Len mentioned earlier. Yadier Molina shut down for the year with a knee injury. And Adam Wainwright, the right hander on the mound for the Cardinals. Got three guys with two first names Aaron, Miles, Allen, Craig, Brendan, Ryan. This day and age, you never know. Maybe somebody named the kid Holiday. I'm sure there is a child out there toting that name around for a first name. Probably was confusing for those guys you mentioned when they were in elementary school and call attendance. Not sure which is the first, and which is the last name. Ryan Brendan, present. <laughs> Alan Bird facing a 6'7", 228-pound Adam Wainwright. And this will be a very quick free fly ball out, six pitch first inning for Wainwright.
Standing play in the month of September. Edward Jones making sense of investing. By the way, uh, we mentioned uh, the other day that uh, Carlos's mom was uh, supposed to be here. Actually, she's going to be uh, in Houston for Zambrano's final start. It will be her first time ever in the United States. Just got her visa a few days ago, and uh, Carlos is very excited that his mom's going to be on hand in Houston. Here's Matt Pagnazzi. Cardinals shutting down Yadier Molina with right knee soreness. He went back to St. Louis, had an MRI. No structural damage, but no sense in pushing it at this point. Now, if the Cardinals miraculously hang around and get into the playoffs, that is a different story, but it is highly unlikely at this point. They also uh, officially shut down left-hander Jaime Garcia. For precautionary reasons. And his final start came against the Cubs in St. Louis nine days ago. So he finished his rookie season 13 and 8 with a 2.70 ERA, putting him in the top five in the National League. Snyder retires Pagnazzi. Tomorrow is E-Set Day at Wrigley Field. Don't miss the action as the Cubs battle the cards at 12.05. The first 10,000 fans will receive a Cubs hat, compliments of E-Set Internet Security. Start protecting yourself now with E-Set Internet Security software. Download your 30-day free trial at ESET.com. That's E-S-E-T.com. Shortstop Brendan Ryan, who normally shows off those uh, candy stripe stirrups but he's got the more modern look going the pant bottoms all the way down to his ankles one and one the count yeah, you get used to seeing certain players wear their uniforms a certain way and uh, when they go to a different fashion statement the way Brendan Ryan has it I didn't recognize it and he turns on it Sam Paul with a great effort but he just couldn't get it as Ryan will pull in with a stand up double. That's one you can take a chance to die for when you're going back toward the wall as a left fielder in that left field corner. You can take a shot as Sam Fold does right here for the diving catch because you know the ball's going to hit the wall and come right back to you. The one that's a little more dangerous is when you're coming in on the ball and make a diving attempt and it gets past you and you have to turn and run all the way back to the warning track to retrieve the baseball. Uh, that's how you see a lot of triples. Wainwright swings and misses. Five career home runs, none this season. That's a fair ball. Angel Hernandez made the call from third. Wainwright will slide in with an RBI double to make it four to nothing. Well, Ramos Ramirez thought it was foul. Once that ball hits the ground before it gets to the bag, it's where it goes over the bag. That's it. And then it can land at that point foul beyond the base. So there's the bounce. Fernandez determined it was fair over third base, and then it landed foul, but again, that doesn't matter. It only matters if it's in the air over the back. Then if it lands foul, it's foul. And it can land well into foul territory sometimes when a guy really gets out in front of a pitch and has some side English on that ball as it bounces down the third base line. It may hit in fair territory, go over the foul line side of the bag at third and end up several feet foul after it goes past the bag but it's still a fair ball. 1-0 to Miles. High fly ball pretty well hit to left center but it's going to stay in as Bird makes a catch and gets it back in quickly.
two outs it's Colby Rasmus who struck out his first time. Now see how Tom Gorzolani goes after Rasmus this time. We mentioned his first at bat Tom established fastballs inside on the corner inside off the plate and then finished him up with a slider low and away. All part of the cat and mouse game of baseball between a pitcher and a hitter. Is he going to go after him the same way he did the first time? This time he starts him with a breaking ball away. Slider missed one and one. Only day game. Everything else later tonight. Noon start tomorrow and 120 on Sunday to wrap up the home schedule. Rasmus missed two weeks of starts in late August, dealing with a calf strain. Cardinals really struggled during that time. Then you had the whole uh, controversy about his relationship with his manager. He admits he's been more relaxed since that thing passed. Swing and a miss. He is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts today. Wainwright's double makes it 4 0 Cardinals. Back in 1985 on this date, Andre Dawson, who at the time was with Montreal, hit three home runs, including two three-run shots and a 12-run fifth as the Expos beat the Cubs 17-15 here at Wrigley Field. Juan Uribe, two homers, including a grand slam in the second inning last night for San Francisco. Saw this note in the uh, San Francisco Chronicle. The Giants 13 to nothing win last night. As Ramirez cracks this one. Out of here. Back of the bleachers. That one bounds on to Waveland. Four to one. Number 24 for Ramos. And the Cubs are on the board. One inning and one hitter for the Cubs offensively today. You can see they're being very aggressive against Adam Wainwright. He's a guy that tries to get ahead in the count and then goes to his breaking pitches, the big curveball, and the sharp slider. Cubs hitters are trying to take that away from him by jumping on the first pitch they see in the strike zone that looks straight. 
Breaking ball strike to Xavier Nady. It was a Giants. Biggest win against the Cubs since 1963. 16 to 2 victory. Juan Marichal got his 20th win that day. Orlando Cepeda, Felipe Alou, and Tom Haller all hit home runs in that game. So it had been a while since the Giants really put one on the Cubs like they did last night. Nady grounds out to Brendan Ryan. Big Z said, I hit one out under the street and it didn't even bounce out there in batting practice. <laughs> Bob, we will not have a shutout for the first time on this homestand. Given the conditions we had here at Wrigley Field for that three game set against the Giants, I'm surprised <laughs> we had any. Looking at today, the Cubs had participated in eight shutouts over their last 13 games. They've gone four and four in those shutouts. Two strikes on Blake DeWitt. Jammed a little bit, muscles it out in his shallow center, and Rasmus did not make the catch, and DeWitt will end up with a double. Boy, Rasmus, I think, thought that ball was just going to hold up, did not appear to be going at 100%, and then had to leave his feet, and he couldn't catch it. Well, center and left center, definitely the sun fields right now. Rasmus just started gliding in, picking up speed, finally decided he better dive to make the catch, and he just didn't come up with it right there. I mean, he definitely had to leave his feet to make the play, but that's a play we've seen a lot of center fielders make this year. Just off the end of the glove, double for Blake DeWitt. Brad Snyder gets his second start in a week. Only two starts of his short major league career. He's got some power. Well, it's not the easiest assignment to face a guy of Adam Wainwright's caliber with a wind blowing out. Might be a good time for his first career home run. Yeah, that's one thing, Len. You mentioned Sam Fold and Brad Snyder and some of the other youngsters are getting an opportunity to play here at the end of the season. It doesn't matter if they're facing a Cy Young candidate or a guy that was just called up from double A. Every one of these at bats uh, of the utmost importance for these guys. Thomas Ramirez with a leadoff homer to make it 4 1. And now Blake DeWitt is at second with one out. And Snyder, like you, played in the Mid American Conference at Ball State, Muncie, Indiana. Swing and a miss for strike three. Hey fans, the 26th annual Cubs convention will take place at the Hilton Chicago on January 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2011. Rooms are available now by calling the Hilton Chicago at 312-922-4400 and asking for the Cubs convention rate. Weekend passes will go on sale in early November. As always, for more information, visit Cubs.com. Ball one to Coy Hill. Getting his 53rd start behind the plate.
inside two and nothing with Gorzolani on deck. Swing and a miss on a changeup. Well, that's why it's so tough to be a number eight hitter in a big league lineup. You got that pitcher in the on deck circle. There's a runner in scoring position. Adam Wainwright is not going to give in and throw you fastballs down the middle of the plate on those 2 0 counts. I think in this particular situation, he wouldn't be too concerned if he walked Coy Hill. Feather to curve and it missed the outside corner and it's 3 1. And if he'll throw a 2 0 changeup, he might throw a 3 1 changeup. Yeah, that's all part of it, you know. You don't want to fill your head with too many thoughts as a hitter. You step out of the box, you consider the situation. What did he throw me when I was ahead in the count earlier? Is he likely to throw me another changeup or off speed pitch in this situation? Quite a guessing game. And it is a changeup and it's outside. Ball four. Doesn't walk too many guys. It was as intentional as it gets for an unintentional walk. First pitch breaking balls in this inning after the Ramirez home run into the bleachers in left center field. He's dropped curve balls on every hitter. First pitch. The 19 wins for Wainwright. Tied for his career high set last year. He's trying to become the third 20 game winner in baseball. CC Sabathia, Roy Halliday, each with 20. Last season, he was in prime position for his 20th win in his final start. He left in the seventh inning against Milwaukee, leading 6 to 1. But the bullpen imploded. He finished with 19 wins and a third place standing in the Cy Young voting. He's pretty good. Yeah. He has a career ERA of 2.99. Rosalani went around. That's strike three. And that's the inning. Cubs get on the board on the Ramirez homer. It's 4-1.
details across Chicagoland on High School Lights, your guide to the High School Gridiron tonight at 1030 on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Yeah. Yeah, it's early. Yeah, we'll be fine. We're only down three. Yeah, Ramirez went way back to left center field. Uh-huh. Yeah, turn on Lennon Bob. Okay. Talk to you later. Pujols, Holiday, and Craig against Orzolani. Low for ball one. Downstairs yet again. There's still a few spots open. We're a pretty cool golf tournament hosted by future Hall of Famer Greg Maddox. And co-host Butch Harmon, the 10th annual Maddox Harmon Celebrity Invitational in Las Vegas, October 25th and 26th. You can go to MaddoxHarmon.com for more information. Lead-off walk to Pujols. Go twist my arm. Go to Las Vegas and play in a golf tournament with Greg Maddox. Jeez. Does it get any better than that? Butch Harmon. Can, if anybody can straighten out your swing, it's Butch Harmon. Great golf coaches around. I've given up hope. to Holiday is hit foul. We will be joined at some point today, I think in the uh, bottom of this inning, by baseball commissioner Bud Selig, who's in attendance. Tom Hoover is looking for a kid. They're all kids at heart, and they're all in school. It's a first. Tom Hoover, our camera guys, getting booed by all the fans who didn't get that ball. No, they weren't booing. They were saying Hoover. <laughs> the only piece of advice to Tom is next time, just turn around and flip it to somebody. Don't even think about it. When you start to think, the worse you feel. All right, a youngster ended up with it. All's well that ends well. Three and one. Sometimes you work around the, the big boys in an opposing lineup and you find out the guys around them, like Alan Craig, do the damage. That happened to Gorzolani in the first inning, and he's in danger of being in another jam here in the third. Ball four. Well, after a walk to Pujols and a single by Holiday back in the first inning, Alan Craig came up and put the Cardinals on the board with that towering home run that pushed up into the front row of the bleachers in left field. Sunday is Colonel Fabian's Gourmet Popcorn Shop Day at Wrigley Field. Don't miss the action as the Cubs battle the cards. Game time is 1.20, but be sure to arrive early. The first 10,000 fans will receive a special Cubs Popcorn Cup, courtesy of Colonel Fabian's Gourmet Popcorn Shops. Rosalani may be showing a little rust. In terms of his command after a three-week layoff. It's a 
another shot at Alan Craig. Alan Craig's swing reminds me of somebody. He starts with his hands very low, but then he gets him up into a more traditional hitting position, and that's a stolen base on Tom Gorzolani right there, just not paying any attention to Albert Pujols at second base. And Albert, for all of his other talents, is one of the most aware base runners in the game. If you don't pay attention, he'll take it. Holiday was not running. I think Pujols just gauged the situation and took off and just picked up his 13th steal. Oh, by the way, another category that he leads the Cardinals in. Zolani needs a strikeout. Fastball missed away. Two and two. Just able to get out of the way. Has himself a souvenir. Would say give it to a kid, but this Cubs roster, Wellington Castillo is a kid. To Cal Berkeley. And the mission the Aho, California. And was a Cardinal minor league player of the year last year. Is the outfield to play third base? Ground ball. Should be two. Cardinals will get a run. So Craig doesn't get an RBI in the 4 6 3, but that Pujo stolen base ends up big. It's now 5 to 1. Well, this will be our All-State good hands play. Hard ground ball hit right to Blake DeWitt at second base. Now that stolen base is going to loom large here as the Cardinals were able to score a run. As their number five hitter made two outs. Pedro Feliz, a tapper to third, and Ramirez tried to barehand it. Couldn't get it. It'll be an infield hit. Struggling Pedro Feliz picks up an infield single. Ramirez may have had a little more time than he realized. He probably could have gloved this ball and made the exchange and still thrown in time to get Feliz, but elected to go with the bare hand and came up empty. Nephew of Tom Pagnazzi, Matt. Sixteen career at bats. And he puts a charge into this one to deep center field, right at the base of the wall. Feliz coming around third. He's going to score, and it's six to one. A first career RBI for Matt Pagnazzi. He crushed it. Looked like it had a chance to get out of here initially off the bat. Had that 
trajectory over the infield. Looked like it was going to carry up into the basket, but hits right at the base of the wall near the 400 mark. And with two outs in the inning, Feliz was off on contact, and Jose Akendo did not hesitate to wave him around third. First career RBI, first career extra base hit. For Pagnazzi. Strike to Ryan. You mentioned Matt Pagnazzi's uncle Tom. I had the uh, fortune or misfortune, however you want to look at it, playing the majority of my career against Tom Pagnazzi in St. Louis, and he was one of those underappreciated players. He handled a pitching staff extremely well. He was a great thrower behind the plate. And like his nephew, Matt had occasional power, would hit one over the outfielder's head, occasionally dunk one up into the seats. But there were so many other star players on those Cardinals teams at that time, especially all the Jackrabbits that could steal bases and do all the amazing things with their speed that Tom kind of flew under the radar, but he was a very important part of those Cardinals teams in the 80s. He's recognized for his defense three times as he got the gold glove. Cubs like Matt, they took him in the 40th round in 2001, but he did not sign. Swing and a miss for strike three. Two more for the Cardinals. We have now busted out to a 6 1 lead early. Careers. So the question is name the last Cardinal other than Albert to lead his team in batting average. Matt Holiday currently with the Cardinal lead. So we'll get the answer coming up. And it's always a pleasure to have with us the Commissioner of Baseball, Bud Selig, who has stopped by Wrigley Field for Cardinals Cubs today. Commissioner Selig, uh, before we get into all the topics of the day, we want to congratulate you on a wonderful ceremony in Milwaukee a few Thank weeks you. ago. Uh, there's a statue outside of Miller Park now. And uh, I know you have to feel really good about that. I really do. It was uh, very emotional. You you were there for a lot of the history, so you know. But it was a it was a great day in every way, and uh, and I'm very grateful. And for those few baseball fans who don't know, you moved the Seattle Pilots to Milwaukee in 1970. That's right. Sam Full, it's a bouncer to second base. Miles will throw him out. Well, the big topic around here is Maple Bats after the. Very scary situation on Sunday with Tyler Colvin. Fortunately, he's doing okay. And uh, I also read, commissioners, that uh, Cliff Lee took a little piece I, of I, that. I, I heard night. about it this morning. I called Tyler, by the way. In fact, he was going to leave the next day for a drive to South Carolina. Let me just say to you that in two years, we've cut down the crack bats by 50%. Now, 
that isn't good enough. We got 50 percent to go. We're using uh, the University of Wisconsin and Harvard University's forest division, and they've been very helpful. We're working on a lot of things, but uh, you bet I'm very. Uh, the Tyler Colvin thing was really scary, and, and I uh, thank goodness that uh, uh, he's okay. Throw to first, not in time. It'll be a hit for Castro. Well, I think everybody acknowledges that it can be a dangerous sport. You've got 95 to 99 mile an hour pitches on occasion, and sometimes the ball gets hit harder than that. The fans are right on top of the field, so you just try to keep everybody. Well, safe we're as working possible. on it. We're, we've spent a lot of time. Every crack bat is sent to New York. Uh, Players Association been very much involved. As I say, the two universities have been involved. We have other experts. They have some potential solutions that they're working on right now. So I, I'm I'm hopeful. Runner on one out, six one, St. Louis. Another big topic, as always, is replay. And you knew once replay was added that it would open a can of worms, which is fine. I but did. You have I, I, I did, and I understand. <laughs> In fact, I saw Ron Sano this morning, and I asked him about it, and he gave me the same answer that most Frank Robinson, for instance, gives me every day. They're satisfied the way it is. But look, we're always looking to improve things. Baseball, Bob, as you know, and Len is a is a game of pace. And, you know, other sports do things, and yes, we do want to get it right, but the question is, if we expand it, what do we expand it to? How much do we include? There's a huge difference of opinion. But what I've said to people, I'm the one that keeps bringing it up, so I am quite willing to, to at least talk about it and consider it. And, and look, the, the Detroit play... The way it turned out, it became a very touching oh, human story. Great story, story in the end, yes. You know, uh, Jim Joyce and right. Armando Galarraga. Yeah. Everybody's human, and oh. Galarraga realized that. That ball came right back up and hit Marlin, I think, in the face. Oh, man. Oh. You know, that will happen on occasion when the hitter gets fooled by a pitch, gets out in front, and fouls it straight down to the ground as Marlin did, and... Well, it was probably a good thing he had those sunglasses. Those wraparound shades may have uh, helped protect his right eye there. You see, it's already a little puffy. It's going to take more than that to get Marlin out of the game. Uh, great, going to give him a few extra seconds. Well, Commissioner Seelig on a completely different topic. You have to be extremely pleased. Uh, we're very excited about Starlin Castro, our young shortstop. A lot of great rookies coming into the game. You know, Bob, that's that's right. We are bringing a new generation of young players to the game, and I am very excited. I've watched him play a lot. He's he is certainly going to be an outstanding player. At 20 years old, he's come a long way quickly. But yes, we do. We really have a remarkable group of uh, young players. It's been a great year. You know. Given the fact we're in the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression, we still have a chance to beat last year, which is amazing. Even if we're close, it's amazing. We're going to do somewhere around 73 million people this year. So the game on the field, obviously, has just been terrific. And uh, now we have some great races going down right to the end. You'll be in San Diego next week, so you guys are going to be in the middle of, uh, of something. There. You also have... Uh Potentially a lot of turnover in terms of playoff participants. You bet. Uh, the well, you know, we, we have, people don't give us the credit. We have more parity, more competitive balance than ever before. And um, uh, I, I'm, I'm re we have had more teams in the playoffs than any other sport. We've had, uh, in the last nine years, different World Series winners. Uh, this year you got Cincinnati, San Diego, Texas. I mean, it's really uh, Tampa Bay, of course, is making another run. So baseball's never had more competitive balance than it has right now. So that's that's what's another thing that made this a terrific year. There are the uh, playoff races. Phillies in good shape in the east. The Reds in the central. Yeah, they've, uh, pretty wild the other two races, though. That's right. The Phillies are really playing well now. It's going to be pretty tough, Bob, I guess, to beat them in the playoffs with that pitching, huh? Well, you know, they went through their injury problems early in the season. That's they right. lost some real key people. Right. But in the grand scheme of things, if you have them back healthy at the end of the year, that could actually work as a positive no for a ball club. No and, question. And their pitching is uh, right up yeah. there with anybody in the game. Absolutely. Two and one to Aramis. Foul pop. And that's going to make the seats out of play. Let's look at the American League races. 
Pretty good one in the East as well, Tampa Bay split that series with the Yankees. I was there Monday night, and, uh, you know, when they won again Tuesday, and I thought, well, I guess I'm afraid that race is, boy, Tampa really came back Ooh. With, a, with a vengeance on them both games. Did Joe Madden buy you a pair of those uh, wacky golf pants that they're wearing on this he, trip? He did not. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> and I'm glad he did. <laughs> and I like Joe Madden a lot, but I'm glad he did. And Ramirez went around. Can you hang on for two more quick questions? I can. I can. Appreciate sure it. Can. Commissioner Seelig with us. We'll be back to Wrigley in a moment. Next year's schedule, interesting, starting with Thursday or Friday. The Cubs start on a Friday and ending in the middle of the week to try to make sure that World Series is as early as possible. I'm nervous about November. I think you both know that. And I am um, looking at it this year, and it, it, it does make me nervous. So next year we're going to start a little early, and I know that in the Midwest it's a little cold. But I think it's going to work out great. We're starting early, and it, it uh, will end early, and we'll end the World Series in, in October. So I, I'm looking forward to it. Pitcher against pitcher here, Gorzolani against Adam Wainwright. Last question, we talked about uh, all the young new stars in baseball, but uh, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about some managers who have either called it a career or possibly calling it a career. Bobby Cox, Lou Pinella, mm -hmm. Cito Gaston, and we're not quite sure about Joe Torrey's future. Mm -hmm. Well, they've been a great part of the game. I, I'm a great fan of Lou's, and uh, I've known Lou. You know, Lou was on the roster of the 1970 Milwaukee Brewers. I, I, they traded him to Kansas City, which was a bit, they were in bankruptcy before we got him, so that was a mistake. But, so I've known him a long time. Bobby Cox is clearly a legend. I had an absolutely remarkable career. And Joe Torre, of course, uh, goes without saying. And um, we'll see what happens to the rest. I think uh, you're going to see, a, I'm guessing somewhere around 12 plus managerial changes this year. So it's going to be going to be an interesting offseason. Well, we thank you for stopping by as always. And uh, I know you've gotten to know Tom Ricketts and uh, his entire family. They've done a great job here. They really have. They're off to a wonderful start. I walked through the stands with them this morning, and it's impressive. He stops, talks to everybody. It's great. Always a pleasure. Lena, good to see you. Thanks, Bob, Commissioner. Pleasure to see you. Good luck. I see you soon. Always appreciate the time. Marlon Bird is out of the game after fouling that ball off. It looked to be his cheek or just below the eye as Aaron Miles picks up a base hit. So you have Fold now in center. A 
with Brad Snyder in left and Kosuke Fukudome playing right. Well, what a fluky injury. We're talking about bats flying around and all of a sudden a foul ball comes right back up and hits Marlin in the face. And you could clearly see it was already starting to swell up underneath his right eye. Given the circumstances and where the Cubs are in the standings at this point of the season, uh, really no reason to push it. Going up in that training room, bag of ice on it, and hopefully Marlon will be okay to be right back in there tomorrow. So Fukudome goes into bird spot in the lineup. And a 2 0 count on Colby Rasmus. Missed again, three and zero. Oh. Justin Berg is up for the cut. It's been a struggle for Tom Gorzolani today. And there's ball four. Two on for Pujols. Hey Bob, you and I have both known uh, Commissioner Selig for a long time. I don't think there's a bigger baseball fan on the planet. Whenever we see him, he's always happy to answer any questions about the big picture with the game, but he would rather talk about baseball. Different teams in the pennant race and how the Cubs are doing and what have you. He loves this game. For a strike to Pujols, who has walked twice, stole a base, a key bag in the third inning, and then scored on a double play ball. Outside, one and one. Still got to work in that team error. Yeah, into the conversation. I always feel a little awkward telling the commissioner what I would do if I were him. But. <laughs> For another day, maybe we'll do it in spring training next year when it's a little quieter. <laughs> and uh, you know, you broached the subject of instant replay, and, and uh, you know, I'm I'm a big proponent of instant yes. replay, but. Uh, I understand that there are certain issues that you have to deal with. It's not as easy as just saying, yeah, we're going to replay everything because uh, that could cause problems in the future with uh, how the replay is used. And I'm sure that Commissioner Seelig, along with uh, a lot of people who know a lot more about this game than I do, are studying that feverishly and trying to find a way to implement it to keep everybody happy and maintain the integrity of the umpires <clears throat> and uh, make this game uh, better than it already is. Something in your throat. Yeah. Three and one. Got to be careful here. Outside. Too careful, unfortunately, to load him up. Well, I can just tell you this with the postseason just around the corner, Landon, as you well know, uh, the increased scrutiny, the increased cameras that will be in place for those playoff games, we're going to see some more missed calls in this postseason. It's just inevitable. As hard as the umpires try, as much as their mechanics allow them to get into positions to make certain calls, sometimes it's just humanly impossible to get the best possible look at a play and make the proper call. And with the technology that we have in place nowadays, it just seems to me like it's a no-brainer to uh, to continue to increase the amount of replays that you use during the course of a ball game, especially in the postseason and eventually during the regular season as well. It's going to be it for Gorzolani. Time for the Alexis pursuing perfection call to the pen. Not an ideal spot for Bird. Base is loaded. One out.
infield in between the third and the fourth. Fortunately, Bob, the base paths are uh, getting messed up again by these Cardinal base runners. Yeah, unfortunately, but the field itself has really yeah. held up well this season. We travel all around the National League, and this is the time of year some of the fields start to show a little bit of wear and tear. Three on one out, Matt Holliday takes a fastball for ball one. Berg last night pitched the eighth inning, gave up a run on three hits against the Giants. There's a ground ball, but it's foul. John Jay is on deck. For a guy who hit a three run homer in the first inning, Alan Craig. Miles at third, Rasmus at second, Pujols at first. There it is. Two and one. Uh, Tony LaRusa, as we well know, uh, uses his. Roster as extensively as any manager in the game, even when he's only got 25 guys to work with. But you give him an expanded roster, it's like having a toy box full of toys. 2 2. He has 11 players available off his bench. Although Yadier Molina is listed, it probably won't be used again this season. Beverage. It's a good Friday afternoon. Yeah, either or would make it a good day, but having both oh, makes it a great oh. day. Good shape. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. He throws that short slider. Looked like it was going to be a strike at the bottom of the zone. It just fell out down near the ankles, and Holiday could not lay off. That's a big out. So Jay batting for Alan Craig. John Jay. Popped out of Hill's mitt, but. No harm, no foul. One ball, no strikes. Ball two. Throw him a strike now with the bases loaded. And he cannot. It's seven to one as a pinch hitter Jay gets an RBI. Six walks issued by Cubs pitching already. <laughs> Feliz is one for two. But even with the one for two, he's nine for 59 so far in September. After hitting 286 in August, came over from Houston on the 19th of August. Where minor league pitcher David Carpenter.
pop up, and Coy Hill will not have a play. You now the Cardinals giving Adam Wainwright a lot of support as he goes after his 20th victory. But again, he had a big lead in his final start last year. Bullpen couldn't hold it. Finished with 19 wins and did not win the Cy Young. Punched out in the right center, but Koske is there, and that'll end the inning. They get yet another run. The Cardinals have scored in every inning and lead 7-1. to one. came up in 2001 he has led the Cardinals an average every year that could end this season but prior to Albert who was the last Cardinal to lead in average the answer Fernando Vina hit exactly 300 in 2000 could be Matt Holiday this season leading the way right now by seven points 316 to 309. Jay stays in and plays right field. Sixty eight on the curve from Wainwright to Nady. He's out. Fifth strikeout, three in a row now for Wainwright. I was uh, chatting with Karen Muscat and Bruce Miles before the game, and we were trying to handicap all the big individual award races. I'll tell you what, there are very few clear cut, if any, clear cut choices in uh, both leagues. Start with the MVP in the National League. Several good choices. I think it'll come down. Certainly tell me if you agree or disagree. To uh, Carlos Gonzalez or Joey Votto. And Pujols will come up a little short this season. And if you ask me to pick between Cargo and Votto, I don't think I can right now. Oh, that's a tough one. Both of those guys have carried their teams for long stretches of the season and statistically uh, are just about as neck and neck as you can possibly be. Pujols will field this DeWitt bouncer. Cy Young. At this point, I'd probably have to say Roy Halladay, but you have the guy on the mound today for the Cardinals, Adam Wainwright. You have Ubaldo Jimenez. Tim Hudson. Lots of good choices. I think Halladay just piled up so many strikeouts, innings, wins. ERA of 
two and a half. First year in the National League, my guess is he'll win it. I would tend to agree with you on that one, although I think you'll also get some votes from Giants fans for Brian Wilson, their fine closer, as well as the Padre fans for Heath Bell. Brad Snyder out in the left center. That's a two out hit. Okay, manager of the year in the NL. I would say the top two candidates right now, Dusty Baker and Bud Black. And if Dusty wins it, it would be his fourth manager of the year award. Anybody else that you would say would be a top candidate? I mean, there are always a lot of choices. There'll be a sentimental vote for Bobby Cox if the Braves uh, can sneak in there and clinch that wild card and make it to the playoffs one more time for Bobby. But I think based on where their teams were expected to finish and how they played this summer, that Dusty and uh, Bud Black are uh, the two prohibitive favorites. That's usually how it plays out in the manager of the year. And if he wins number four, Dusty will be tied for the all-time lead. I think it's Bobby Cox and Tony La Russa, each with four. Go over to the American League MVP. It's got to be Josh Hamilton or Miguel Cabrera. And once again, Hamilton's team uh, is headed for the postseason. Cabrera is, uh, is headed home. But look at the surrounding cast. It's true too. Oof. And I also, and again, I don't have a vote. Do you give Cabrera a little extra credit for bouncing back after you know, kind of a tough end of the season last year? I'll tell you, a guy that would get consideration if his team had had a better year is Paul Canerco over on the south side of town. He's had an unbelievable year. I think the Hamilton Cabrera race will be as close as the Votto Gonzalez race. And it could come down to maybe a Joe Maurer getting a second place vote over one of those two guys or, or something like that. Scott Maine is up. Cy Young. You have a 500 pitcher in Seattle named Felix Hernandez. Who probably should win it. But he's on a bad team and he doesn't have the wins. We'll get into that a little bit more as we continue. 7 1 St. Louis. You could win five five dollar foot long subs from Subway. We get into the fifth. All Cardinals early on seven to one. All right, so let's finish our uh, award conversation. So Felix Hernandez, I, I think I might vote for him in the American League. You've got CC Sabathia, David Price, guys on contenders. What's your thought on the AL Cy Young? Uh, I like Felix myself. Uh, Leads in strikeouts and innings. Yeah, pitching for a pretty bad ball club. Although a couple of guys that'll 
probably not get a lot of attention. Trevor Cahill from the Oakland Athletics is third the American League in ERA. He's got 17 victories. Leads the American League in opponents batting average, but probably won't get the same kind of recognition. Pop up right side. It's DeWitt to retire Pagnazzi, manager of the year in the American League. I, I got to say, Ron Washington. For the reasons we talked about, the two guys mm -hmm. in the National League. Yeah. Ron Garden hire. Go for Gardy every year. Yeah. Okay, rookies of the year. Nationally, we discussed it during the uh, Giants series. I think we both agree it should be Buster Posey. And you have Jaime Garcia. We talked about him with the Cardinals. Starlin Castro, Jason Hayward, Gabby Sanchez. But uh, my choice would be Buster Posey. And I would agree with that one. Not to take anything away from those other fine rookies, but uh, given the position that he plays, catching the pitching staff that he catches, and the fact that the Giants felt enough of him to trade away one of the Molina brothers to make room for him and immediately inserted him into the four spot in the lineup. That tells you what kind of player he is now and what kind of player he's going to be in the future. And just based on a quick look of the uh, American League leaders in the rookie category, got to say Austin Jackson, the Tiger center fielder, 25 steals, a 298 average, 99 runs for Austin Jackson. Brendan Ryan rolls it back up the middle for a base hit. One other honorable mention for manager of the year. I was chatting with Al Hrabowski, Cardinal broadcaster between innings. He said Brad Mills. I don't think he'll win it, but consider they were 0 and 8 and then 17 and 34 to start the season. You give Brad Mills a lot of credit for just keeping that team afloat. There's a mad Hungarian, Al Hrabowski. And once again, uh, as happens a lot of times, we overlook Jim Tracy and the job he's done in Colorado again this year. They kind of did their usual Rocktober run here at the end of the season to put themselves back into contention, not only in the division, but in the wild card race. That's fun. I, I enjoy uh, those conversations. Chatted with Mike Quaddy. Uh, he, as a manager, and has received a ballot for the Silver Slugger and Gold Glove Awards. He cannot vote for anyone on the Cubs in either category. I think Marlon Byrd is a very strong Gold Glove candidate in center field. I think Giovanni Soto should win the Silver Slugger behind the plate. As Wainwright, got a piece of Coy Hill, big piece of Coy Hill, yeah. and that did not feel good. Oh, and two. It'll pass eventually. Not for the squeamish. Oh boy. The catchers just hate it when pitchers are up uh, there to bunt. They just, you know, they're going to foul it off of you somewhere, and you hope it's not there. Okay, that's probably the last re that's replay we need to enough. see. Yeah. One and two. But Mike made a good point. I, I totally agree. The Gold Glove Award for the Outfielders, there are three awards, and the position is just outfield. It's not left field, center field, right field. And he thinks it should be for each particular position, and I agree. Last year, I think it was three center fielders to win, and as Wainwright ended up leaving his feet on that swing as he strikes out. It's usually, you know, three center fielders or two center fielders and a right fielder. It's very rarely a left fielder to win a gold glove. I suppose part of the reason, Bob, is that some outfielders play all three positions. There are special challenges to each position. Obviously, your center fielder is your most adept at going either direction, coming in, going back, and ideally has a strong throwing arm. Your right fielder is normally your strongest throwing outfielder, and uh, your left fielder maybe doesn't have the best throwing arm, but uh, uh, he's probably going to rack up more assists because... Left field's a little closer to home plate, and uh, teams are going to try to score on base hits to left field more often. And 
Left fielders tend to rack up more outfield assists than any other outfielder. I think it would be great, and I don't know what you would call it. Maybe you can help me with this. The award, you know, they have the sixth man award in the NBA, something like the utility player of the year or the pinch hitter of the year, whatever you'd like to call it. The, the, the award that goes to the best non everyday player. You'd probably have to put a, a qualification, say no more than you know, 100 games or whatever. Maybe play more than one position. So more than right along those lines. It's a very valuable part of any ball club. Three and one. And the guy in the third base coach's box for the Cardinals was a guy that would have won that many times in his playing career. Jose Akendo, a very, very versatile utility player. Solid offensive player. Back in the day, he ran a little bit. Goes ground ball picked up by Blake DeWitt, and that's the final out. Halfway home, it's seven-one Cardinals. Darwin Barney takes a curve for strike one as he bats for Justin Berg who went an inning and two thirds. Not charged with any runs even though he did walk. John Jay with the bases loaded. That run was charged to the starter Tom Gorzolani. Barney, Fold and Castro. Here in the fifth against Wainwright. He's given up one run that was a solo. Home run by Aramis Ramirez. One and two. And one hot fielded Brendan Ryan for the out. Apple vacations in the Chicago Cubs are trekking to the Dominican Republic. You can join. Stay seven nights at Ibero Star Hacienda Dominicus with your favorite Cubs players, including Sean Marshall, Carlos Marmel, and Hall of Famer Billy Williams. Go to applevacations.com backslash Cubs to learn more about this exclusive trip. Strike to Sam Fold, who began the day in left and is now playing center. Yeah. 
remind uh, those Cup fans watching from Mesa, Arizona. Got a big event coming up on Saturday, October 9th at Hohokam Park. Ron Santo will be there from 10 to 11.30. You can go to keepthecubs.com for more info. And this is very important. Proposition 420. Prop 420. Vote yes for Prop 420 if you live in Mesa, Arizona. If you want to keep the Cubs in Mesa for spring training, this is a very key component. The upcoming November election, you vote yes for Prop 420. Voter registration deadline is uh, coming up soon. So, again, if... Uh, you live in Mesa, Arizona, and you want to keep the Cubs, vote yes for Prop 420. Do not take it for granted. And make sure you head on out to Hohokam on October 9th to meet Ron Santo. First 400 fans will get a special button to commemorate the day. Again, keepthecubs.com. Strike three, number seven for Wainwright. Speaking of Ron Santo, Len, I yes. got a nice letter here from a gentleman named Bob Auler, A U L E R, who, by the way, is turning 70 today. Happy birthday, Bob. But he was also a camper at the Randy Hunley Fantasy Camp down in Mesa, Arizona, and has sent me pictures of Bob striking out Ron Santo. I'm going to have to go show these to Ronnie between innings. He's not sure like it at all. He said it was a belt high slider with a two strike count, and Ron swung right through it. I don't know, especially with the Cubs down seven to one. Yeah, maybe I better think save this is the day to do it. <laughs> maybe the Cubs will be up ten to nothing tomorrow, and you can slip it in there. Well, happy birthday to Bob nonetheless. Congratulations on punching out the chief. Mr. One for two, hitting 307. He's back in the top ten in batting average in the league as he lines out. Two Albert Pujols. Castro ninth in batting average going into action today. 7-1 St. Louis. Great rivalry matchup in a tune-up at Joe Louis Arena. Blackhawks Red Wings tonight at 6. 
Only on the TV home of the Stanley Cup champs, Comcast Sportsnet. Fans, best friend. That'll be a home and home. Red Wings will be here tomorrow night. Darwin Barney will stay in and play short. Starlin Castro's day cut short. And Scott Maine will go into that two spot in the lineup. He faces Colby Rasmus to start it. Pujols and Holiday also do up. Russell and Kashner get loose. Outside corner, 0 and 2. Scott Maine has really come out of nowhere. He's pitching at Iowa, but not a guy we had heard much about. And he has been impressive as he strikes out Rasmus. Watch Comcast Sportsnet Cubs game replays on demand with Xfinity TV from Comcast. Don't miss the action. Call 1 800 Xfinity today. Pujols without an official at bat. He's had three plate appearances, all resulting in walks. As Albert takes his stance here, we had a great shot of his hands on that pitch before. The top hand, the right hand, the bat is right at the very base of his fingertips. He couldn't hold. Joe West brings him up from first base. Some hitters have a tendency to bury that bat down in the palm of their hand. Albert has it right up in his fingertips where he can really maximize that wrist snap as the ball gets into the hitting zone. But this time, Scott Main gets the better of him with a good hard slider down and in. And that particular grip may make it more difficult to hold up on a check swing just like that. Low to Holiday. Tell we're in late September by just the uh, the shadows, very long shadows. The sun a little bit more in the south here in the late summer, early fall. A similar uh, shade pattern to early April. As Holiday takes the walk, so that's five walks combined between Pujols and Holiday. Boy, three o'clock on June fifteenth, we would not see any. Shade on the field of play at this time of the day. Those shadows will probably uh, affect the play in this game as we get deeper and deeper into the ball game as the shadow of the roof continues to move out toward home plate further and further. One and nothing on John Jay, who took a bases loaded walk as a pinch hitter in the fourth inning. Kind of weird this way, but whenever you see a baseball movie that has footage in a major league ballpark, you can always tell at what time of the day they're shooting the footage. And one movie in particular, I, I, I know a lot about County Stadium. I used to go there all the time in Milwaukee. They shot all the scenes in Major League at the ballpark at about 10 in the morning because I just could tell where the sun was. The sun was still in the east. 
And whenever you see baseball there, you you always knew the sun was basically where Miller Park's you know configuration very similar. So if the sun is behind the left fielder at Miller Park or Old County Stadium, you know it's got to be nine or ten o'clock a.m. It just didn't look right. <laughs> Called strike three. That'll end the inning. Scott Main strikes out the side. Seven one Cardinals. With his first at bat. Came into play right in the fourth inning. We have not gotten word on Marlon Bird, but I'm guessing he went right into the trainer's room. They put a big ice pack on his face right below his right eye. And a foul ball that hit the ground came right back up and popped him below the eye. Two and one on Fukudome. Wainwright's strikeout of Sam Fold in the fifth gave him 213 on the season. That is a new career high, and it also tied him for the league lead with Roy Halliday. A pop up that'll be playable for Pujols. Fans text banner to B Hawks. That's two four two nine five seven to join Blackhawks Mobile and be entered to win two tickets to the Hawks 2010 home opener on October 9th. That's banner to two four two nine five seven for your chance to catch this historic moment as the Hawks raise the Stanley Cup banner to the Raptors. We want to send out get well wishes to Paul Friedman, the uh, Cubs public address announcer. Uh, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm assuming he's not working today because he lost his voice last night. I talked to Paul briefly after the game. It just kind of all of a sudden happened. So Wayne Mesmer filling in today, and we hope uh, Paul's voice is well rested, and hopefully he'll be back here before the end of the weekend. Always good to see Wayne. Problem was, I was asking Paul about what happened, and he was telling me, and I wanted to say, you know what? Don't tell me. <laughs> Conserve your voice. Send me an email. Text message. Save your voice.
Right field, it'll get down for Ramirez. This will be his second hit. On his way to second, he will get there sliding. Home run and a double for Ramirez today. Obvious mistake that time from Wainwright. That fastball right down the heart of the plate, middle of the thighs. Pagnazzi wanted it down low and away, but that's what good hitters do. They take advantage of good pitchers' mistakes. Wishes today, Len. Happy eighth birthday to Troy D'Amico. Also, happy 70th to Janet Richardville from her friend Aaron Graybeal. Base hit, Xavier Nady. Ramirez stops at third. Been a pretty slow homestand for Nady. That's his first hit in his 12th at bat. So happy fifth birthday wishes to Dylan Ori from Kewanee, Illinois, and a happy fifth anniversary to Justin and Jessica Bishop from Springfield. Hey, happy September 24th to you, partner. And you too. You know this is one of your favorite days of the year. Yeah. It's my favorite day today. Blake DeWitt, first and third, one out. Everybody has to hold as he lines out to Aaron Miles. One last anniversary wish. Happy 40th to Dave and Bev Sutter from Dubuque. Good base running that time by both Nady and Ramirez. Freeze on a line drive from our Coors Light Robo Camp. Ball hit hard, but unfortunately, right at Aaron Miles at second base. The Cubs runners able to retreat to their bases safely. Wind blowing straight out to right. Snyder lifts. Jay back on the warning track. He has it. And Wainwright gets out of it. Still 7-1. Sports stars and celebrities join host David Kaplan to discuss the day's hottest sports topics. Don't miss Chicago Tribune Live, presented by Harris Bank tonight at 5.30 on 
Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Seventh inning, 7-1 St. Louis as they try to snap a five-game skid against the Cubs. The Cubs great, and current Boise Hawks manager Jody Davis will conduct the stretch today. Jody. Main to Feliz, ball one. What else is going on around baseball? You see Matt Merton with a 200 hit season in Japan. Darwin Barney gets Pedro Feliz. Playing for the Henshin Tigers, fourth player in Japanese baseball history to have a 200 hit campaign. So, congrats to Matt Merton. Does make you wonder if that would be his ticket back to the majors. Although I don't know what he's making in Japan. He might be making more than he could make here. One and nothing to Pagnazzi. Kyle McClellan up in the Cardinal pen. Rockies go into the weekend against the Giants having lost four in a row. They got swept at Arizona. Not a good time to go into a tailspin. Close pitch. It missed two and one. A tail up for the Cubs. Rockies three and a half behind the Giants in the West, three and a half back of Atlanta in the wild card, but they're in third place in both races. That's not insignificant. You got to pass two teams. Phillies starting a series with the Mets tonight in Philadelphia. The Phillies have won 10 in a row. They were seven games out on July 21st. They've gone 44 and 15 since. A 13 game swing in the standings as they are six games up. They have gone 18 and 3 in September. With a magic number of four. That's a wow. That is a wow. I mean, we knew the Phillies had a good ball club, and we touched on it when Commissioner Seelig was here in the booth. Uh, they had. Their share of injuries early in the season. Every team suffers injuries over the course of a baseball season, but I think the timing of those injuries uh, is going to be very significant for the Phillies. Swinging bunt, Maine will fire in time to get Pagnazzi. You get your horses back healthy at exactly the right time of the year, and uh, you realize you didn't miss them quite that much back in the early part. By Scott Maine getting off the mound quickly, busting it over there to that third baseline. Fortunately, the catcher Matt Pagnazzi running and not one of the swifter Cardinal runners, but a nice play nonetheless. It's going to be it for Maine with Brendan Ryan coming up. Double switch as Micah Hoffpower will come in to play left for Brad Snyder, who made the final out of the sixth. Nice hand for Scott May.
Northwestern hosts the University of Illinois Fighting Illini on November 20th. The next day, Sunday, November 21st, the Cubs are giving fans the unique chance to toss around a football and relax on the yard lines at touchdown on Wrigley Field. Participant tickets are $50 and guest tickets are $15 with proceeds benefiting Chicago Cubs charities. For more information, visit Cubs.com. Hard throwing Marcos Mateo with two outs, nobody on, facing Brendan Ryan. 1-0 pitch, fouled back. Adam Wainwright might be done after six. As Randy Wynn is in the on deck circle and Kyle McClellan has been cranking it up. There's Hoff Power and left. Slider in there, one and two, the count. Bouncer up the middle. Cut off by Darwin Barney, and he gets Ryan by a half a step. Wainwright is done. McClellan coming in first. The stretch with Jody Davis. Today's guest conductor for Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Welcome former Chicago Cub great Jody Davis. All right. Let me hear you. A one. A two. A three. Hey. Underway in the bottom of the seventh. New pitcher for St. Louis is right hander Kyle McClellan. Randy Wynn also playing right, and he will lead off the eighth. With the Cardinals leading seven to one. Great to have with us Jody Davis as Coy Hill slices one to left, and it's caught by Matt Holiday. Jody, always great to see you. Great job with the stretch. You were fretting over it, and I don't have no idea why. You were great. Oh, it's anytime you come back and do it. It's, you know, do you get them started? Do you worry about messing <laughs> something up here? But it's great to be back. Manager at Boise, uh, who have you had who is with the current active Cubs roster throughout the uh, system? Well, I didn't, sit at, I didn't sit out and count them, but I had Darwin Barney on that championship team down in Daytona, and um, Mark Mateo. Uh, Andrew Kashmir, Coleman. You know, I really just have to look at a roster. Samarja, I had him earlier at, over at Peoria, so it's it's really a blast to see some of these kids play here. With it. And this is the goal to get him, get them to this level, and to help the big league club. And I'm sure you're very proud. Well, I am proud, and and it's like you said, uh, we spend a lot of time down here trying to get them here, and to actually come and now watch them play, it's it's really a thrill. What's the biggest challenge uh, for you uh, as a manager of a team that the roster changes on a daily basis and a lot of times it has nothing to do with what you're doing what your team's doing it's just other needs throughout the system. 
Well, that too, and and you know our our goal is to see him right here in Chicago. So a guy gets hot and has a good three weeks, he's gone, and you get a guy struggling sometimes, <laughs> and you try to pick up the pieces, and then. Well, this year uh, we're signing guys out of the draft, and they're coming right to me. So I'm, I'm putting guys in the lineup I've never seen play before, never seen, seen do anything. That's that's really a lot of fun of it. Uh, it's a challenge, but it's, it's a lot of fun too. Sam Fall with two outs and nobody on. Look ahead to the off season, the Cubs convention coming up in mid January. Always a great time. And Whenever Jody Davis's name is mentioned, gets one of the biggest cheers of the weekend. It's it a great is, feeling, isn't it? Is it is truly a great. Day for for us as players to come back uh, and and just unite with old teammates. It's caught by Randy Wynn. Jody, can you hang on for a couple minutes? Sure. We'll be back with Jody in the eighth inning. It's seven to one Cardinals. Those are the uh, starters in the uh, Cardinal lineup. They've uh, spread it around today. Even Rasmus 0 for 3, but a walk as part of that uh, fourth inning, which they scored a run. And your old teammate, Bobby Dernier, Cubs first base coach. You know, it's interesting, Jody. He threw out 78 guys winning the Gold Glove in 1986. There are very few catchers today who would even have 78 attempts. Guys used to run a lot more back in your day. Well, that that was the era that Bob and I played in. Uh, it was all about numbers, and and I can remember looking uh, to see when we played the Cardinals, and I knew two weeks ahead of time when when that track team was coming to town. Uh, but it was it was just uh, the era where they they ran a lot, and I got a lot of attempts. Randy Wynn with his first at bat. I'll ask both of you guys. Uh, who was your mentor in terms of catching? He was the one guy who taught you, taught you more about the game than anybody. Uh, Johnny Oates for me. Johnny was our catching coach here, and uh, and and I get, I'm going to tell you I'm going to give a lot of our pitching staff, the veteran pitching staff. When I came up, they they taught me how to call a game as much. You know, I I, I came through the minor leagues with guys that could throw brush it up there 95, and I'm putting down the one, and I get up here, and I'm going, oh, this guy's throwing 86. Well, yeah, what am I going to do? And they just Kept shaking off, going back to the sinkers, and I'm going, hey, there's not like something to this sinker here. And, <laughs> but but I give a lot of credit to Johnny Oates and, and to the pitching staff that was here when I came up. Yeah, and I would agree with you about the pitchers. I caught a very veteran staff when I first got to the big leagues and realized very quickly how little I knew about pitching. And uh, it, it really helped to have guys on the mound that knew what they were doing and kind of lead me through the game until I got a feel for it. And uh, Milt May was another guy, the veteran catcher uh, with the Giants when I came up that uh, it really helped me a lot. Win taps a foul. Okay, I'm going to ask both of you a very unfair question. Your team wins the game in both cases. You go 0 for 4, catch a shutout, or you go 4 for 4 in like a 12-10 win and you hit a home run. What what was better as a catcher in the lineup? 
I'll go with the shutout just because I know it's going to be a shorter game. <laughs> Great answer, Sam Fold out of deep center. Bob, I know you'd rather have four for four and catch a shutout, but I'm not giving you that choice. I'll take the hits because uh, <laughs> that works when you go to negotiate your contract at the end of the season. When you tell them, hey, I caught all those shutouts, they say, yeah, but you didn't throw them. You just caught them. <laughs> Bottom line is you wanted to get a win. didn't That's matter right. how you got the win. That's, That's right. exactly right. That's what it's all about. Now, Bob tells a story. You caught a double header one day, right, D.B.? Yeah. Uh, in San Francisco. I'm sure you caught a few double headers in your day. Do you remember how many innings, uh, like the most innings you caught one day? Did you have a 20 inning game or anything like that? I caught a game here against the Dodgers. We went 21 innings. The game was called because of darkness after 17. So we picked it up at noon the next day, and I caught, we played four innings in, in that game, and then, and then I caught the nine after that. So. Oh. You guys were talking about knee replacements during the break. That's not <laughs> yeah, a big shock. Bob's going to talk me into one. Yeah. Well, Len, what this is right here is an all-you-can-eat buffet for an orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> you know. That's exactly right. We don't, we're not even talking about the elbows and the shoulders and the fingers. Not at all. You see Coy Hill. He has a few extra pieces of equipment that were not available when you played. and. He still got hurt earlier in the game. That's the life of a catcher. Jody, always a pleasure. And, of course, we will see you at the Cubs convention in January. Thanks for stopping by. It's great to be back. See you, Jody. Thanks, Gail. What a tough day for the Cubs offense. It's actually been a very difficult homestand offensively, even though the wind has blown out three of the four days. Michael Hoffpower lifts out into deep left center. On the track is Holiday. Know a newborn's Cubs fan? The Newborn Fan Club is a perfect gift to showcase what it means to be a Cub for life. Receive a customized photo announcing the birth on the Wrigley Field marquee, a Cubs birth certificate, Cubs baby stocking cap, and a Cubs Rookie of the Year onesie. Perfect for parents and friends alike. Visit Cubs.com for more information and sign up today. Come full circle in life. You begin by wearing the onesie. You've got to wear three or four different things just to put an outfit together. I'm kind of getting back to that onesie idea. Whatever simple. Could be a good look for you. My Comcast Sportsnet onesie. <laughs>
This is a fourth game of the homestand. The Cubs have scored three runs. Remember what they did before the off day. They played at 13 on Sunday in Florida. Full count three and two. And we should add Jody Davis is going to manage in Venezuela uh, coming up. One of our favorites. He's managed now in the cut system for four years. SK walks. Visit the official online shop of the Chicago Cubs at Cubs.com. Browse the largest selection of official gear, including the latest apparel, nostalgic memorabilia, and authentic classics for the whole family. Get your gear from the official source, the Cubs.com shop. Accept no substitutes. In there on Ramirez. He's had a good day, a homer and a double. Send out happy birthday wishes to Helen Price. Golf to left. Wind carrying out to the track where Holiday makes a catch. Wednesday, the Cubs hope to play the spoiler as San Diego as they battle the Padres on the road. Coverage begins at 8.30 with Chevy Cubs pregame live. Don't miss Cubs Padres Wednesday night at 8.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. To Nady. See the batter now in the shadows, a pitcher still in the sun. Ground ball, you had the second baseman Miles playing basically behind second base, but he's able to get over there in time to make the play. We'll head to the ninth, all St. Louis in game one, seven to one. Catering our annual Comcast Sportsnet TV crew lunch today. We avoided the rain. And we had a good time a couple of hours before the game. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. 
Go Cubs. Our crew's getting younger. Yes, they are. That's Sophia Medvin, my new girlfriend. She's a huge Cubs fan and a big Bob and Len fan, so uh, we appreciate the fact that Sophia was here with us today. She likes me simply because I work with you. Well, I'll tell you, that, that pizza shows up in the crew. It, it looks like a bunch of guys going to the electric chair. The last meal. Some of our crew members look like they've been in the electric chair. Let's see a day game after a night game. <laughs> Greg Silas. Thanks for everybody's hard work all season long. It's been a tough year for the Cubs on the field, but we've had fun as always on the broadcasts. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. One and one the count. Hoover, Tom Hoover, Jim Tianis. <laughs> Jeff Hilbert as well in audio hanging out in the dugout. JD, John Dickinson. Stephanie Norris. Dave Chella. They've got a haircut. One of them. Pujols with a base hit. That's the first ball he has put in play in his fifth plate appearance. It's a leadoff single. Three walks, a strikeout, and a single. Air conditioning always works in the uh, production truck. They always remind us of that when it's 95 degrees outside. Swing and a miss by Matt Holliday. One ball, one strike. Holiday now with a 16 game hitting streak after a first inning base hit. Big blow in this one, a, a three run homer by Alan Craig in that opening inning. And when you're facing uh, Adam Wainwright, uh, you really hate to spot the Cardinals any runs early in the ball game because you know how tough runs are going to be. Uh, to get against Adam Wainwright, at least most of the time. The last time the Cubs faced him, they banged him around pretty good. But for the most part, uh, you give Adam Wainwright an early lead in a ball game, he'll figure out a way to make it stand up. Foot slider was in the dirt. And the count is full. And up to second base. DeWitt will throw to first. Pujols is tagged out. Double play. Four, three, six. I played perfectly that time by Blake DeWitt from our Coors Light Robo Cam. Step into the baseline. 
Pujols avoids the initial tag, but because he had to stop to do so, that gave the Cubs enough time to throw on to first for the force out. And now the 3-6 put out at second base. Nick Stavanoa was in the original lineup that uh, pulled after batting practice. Having a sore knee. And able to pinch hit. He's batting for McClellan. We're going to see Ryan Franklin there closer in a non save spot. Is a sand castle in the dugout. A dirt castle, I think, would be more appropriate. Fun with Gatorade cups. Big swing and a miss. Make it two and two. MLB.com reporting that the San Diego Padres have put in a waiver claim on Felipe Lopez, who was sent home earlier this week and released by the Cardinals. Reportedly, in part for being late to the ballpark on a couple of occasions. Let's back to what you mentioned a few days ago. You think a guy can do one thing to help you win one game, even this late in the season, you have to at least explore it. And also brings to mind the one rule that is common to every team in the major leagues be on time. Yeah, you didn't have a lot of rules when you took over in Arizona, but I know that was one of them. Show up. Darwin Barney gets Nick Stavanoa. Also, Justin Morneau will not return to the Twins before the end of the season because of a concussion. 7 1 Cardinals in the night. Other members of our TV production crew, John Eckhart, Dennis Gates, David Summers, Steve Casey, all in our replay room, Frank Leone, Doug Bullard in audio, Danielle Denning, our score box operator, Tommy and Kurt Bagby in video, Mike Kessel, our engineer, Mark Stencil in graphics, Joe Vinci, our technical director, can't forget Wynn Griffiths, who's hiding behind... 15 monitors in our booth. And our crew today being led by our producer, Mark Brady. Hi, Wynn. There's Wynn. Our director, Bob Albrecht. 
Our associate producer Tamara Anderson. I thank our stage manager in the booth, Christine Chardonneau. Our director Dave Turner will be back with us on this final road trip. Our tech manager Mark Harper and the senior executive producer of Comcast Sportsnet, Jim Corno Jr. I also want to thank the president of Comcast Sportsnet, Jim Corno Sr., all the salespeople and all the great reporters we've had throughout the season, the pre and post game crew. It is a major team effort to provide you with daily Cubs baseball here on Comcast Sportsnet. Here's a closer, Franklin. 25 of 27. This is not a safe chance. Two and one. On DeWitt, who doubled his first time. He's one for three. Caught by Rasmus for the out. We didn't see Franklin in the series down in St. Louis when the Cubs swept the Cardinals that three game series uh, about a week or 10 days ago. If I remember right, I read an article while we were in St. Louis that said Franklin had been playing around with a knuckleball, which gave him. Seven different pitches that he could use to close out ball games. That's very unusual. Usually a closer has one or two pitches that he can command effectively. And to, to hear Franklin in the paper talking about having seven different pitches to use to close out ball games was uh, very unique. Now you might see him throw on today with a six run lead. He has thrown it in games this year. The cutter there, one and one on Bobby Scales. Bobby in a pinch hitting roll here in the ninth. Follow up on that Justin Morno item. Still possibly could appear for the Twins in the postseason, but he's been out a while with a concussion. He will not appear again in a regular season game for the Twins. He has not begun major baseball activities. Been out since early July. Three and two. Franklin recently took a leave of absence to deal with a personal issue. He has hinted at retirement a few times after his contract runs out following the 2011 season, but he recently chatted with Hall of Famer Bruce Souter and said he might back off on that. Fastball fouled away. If he's still pitching well and everybody at home is on board with him continuing, he will probably do that. Often hear of a lot of veteran players in all kinds of sports hint that you know what next year's my last year. Or I'm really thinking about retiring. And then the reality hits you in the face if you're 37, 38, sometimes even younger than that. And you say to yourself, once I'm done, I'm done. That's it. Carlos Zambrano has alluded to a possible retirement after this current contract. Two down here in the night. The GMC player of the game is Alan Craig, who supported Adam Wainwright with a three run homer in the first. And plenty of run support today for a guy who will probably get his 20th win. Alan Craig not even in the initial lineup uh, for Tony La Russa today, but made it pay off uh, getting into that lineup right before game time.
Ground ball to first. Gobbled up by Pujols. Franklin covering first and the Cardinals snap a five game losing streak to the Cubs by taking the opener seven to one. The inconsistent offense was not a big concern when the Cubs pitching was lights out but Last couple of days have been uh, tough ones for the pitching staff, and uh, this offense, Bob, has produced just three runs in the first four games of the homestand. Yeah, it's really easy to point the finger at the offense and say they're not getting it done the way they did in that really nice stretch of games, but uh, you really have to look at the opposing pitching that the Cubs have faced recently, and uh, most recently Adam Wainwright and Kyle McClellan, Ryan Franklin, really good today. That'll wrap up our game coverage, but still lots more to come. Stay tuned. Sylvania Post Game Live to follow the final score today. The Cardinals 7, the Cubs 1. We'll be back with you Wednesday night from San Diego. It's game three of a four-game set against the Padres. In-game scoring provided by ScorePad. And now for Bob, for Chris Bowden, and our entire Comcast Sportsnet crew, Len Casper sending it to Gale and